Hello, everyone. Welcome to the UFC 273 version of Jab Cross Hook. Myself, Ian McMillan, Reed Wallach, Amy Kaplan. Pack show today. We got two different guests. Uh, we got, uh, uh, we got, uh, Kay Hansen. I was going to say Matt Favola first. I forgot his first name. <laughs> Matt Favola. <laughs> Kay Hansen's going to come on first, though. It's going to be the first time that we actually have a fighter fighting this weekend on the show. Very excited for that. Um, obviously, we've got to go over a few things first. So, right uh, before we bring on Kay Hansen, uh, the same thing that we bring up every single show it's how we start our shows. What are we drinking tonight? And then we're going to uh, start talking about some fights because it is a stacked card this weekend. Yes. I can't wait. Reed, what are you drinking? Okay, so I had a few people over. I was going to bring on what I had on last week because I didn't have time to go get anything, but I found a Peroni in my fridge. So that is the UFC 273 beer. I've had this before. Another just rock solid beer, but that's what we're going with for this week's show. Um, probably like a classic 6 5 beer right here. Special guest appearance by my cat right away, right at the start. Love it. Amy, what are you drinking? Well, I have to lock my cats outside because one of them burnt their tail off almost. And then the other one cr crawled across my back. So you will not see any <laughs> cats on my screen. I am, I'm drinking the same thing from last week because I got to finish the bottle. White sangria. I'm obsessed with this. I can only get it in one shop. So I don't want to let it go to waste. They count. Uh, and I'm drinking my classic go-to, but this time it's not just plain water. I did go and get my, uh, my soda water here. So a little Tito's vodka, a little soda. Yeah, much better than just the vodka shrimp. Yeah. It's still much better than just vodka mixed with plain water. <laughs> also, I'm wearing my sport coat today. I need a win in the draft. This is the first time we're doing the draft now in a little while. Uh, I'm the only one without a win. It is just the three of us for the draft this time. We're going to bring on Kay Hansen, and then, and then we're going to do the draft. Uh, and then Matt Favola is going to come on here uh, at the end. Um, so I decided to dress up a little bit. Hopefully, uh, it's going to bring me a little bit uh, of Look good, good luck. Draft, speaking though. both. What's that? Look good, draft good. Look good, feel good, draft good. That is the strategy. Um, let's bring up, I think we have our results from the last draft. It's been so long now. I don't even totally remember how we all did. I know I lost. Uh, Jay, that's right. Jalen Turner came on, went 3-0. Uh, and the UFC fighters now, when they do the draft with us, they are now undefeated. Uh, I went 1-2. and two. Reed, you went two and one, so you came first out of us, out of us three. So you will choose the order of the draft when we eventually get to it. Uh, Amy, you went zero and three. So, but you did get aggressive. To be fair, you went three underdogs. Sometimes that can happen if you go three underdogs. My only win was a pretty chalky favorite, um, but uh, I, I guess I can, uh, I, I can brag about not coming last, <laughs> which is nice for a change. Uh, so that was, how long ago was that now? Almost a month ago. We're going to be a little bit more consistent with these drafts moving forward, which I'm excited for, starting with this weekend's card, which, like I said, uh, is absolutely stacked. We are going to get into it a little bit. Two title fights on the line, uh, all that good stuff. But, Amy, right before we went live, you, you brought up that there's rumor that the UFC is going to, like, do a tournament. We didn't get a chance to talk about it much. So I, I haven't seen this, so fill me and read it. Okay, so there's a journalist, and I'm going to butcher his last name, and I'm so sorry. I respect you so much, so I should have asked you how to pronounce your last name. John Hoiko? I don't okay. know. Okay. Sounds right. He, uh, he's J-H-K-M-M-A, if you want to look him up. Um, he tweeted yesterday that multiple sources have informed him that the UFC will have an eight-man tournament across four divisions. The divisions are 125, 135, 145, and 155, okay. starting in Singapore during UFC 275 week. And it says that their contract's already going out, and it's going to be heavy on Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and Thai fighters, which to me sounds Interesting. so good. Oh, my, I got, like, I saw it, yeah. and I was like, ah! Like, I literally screamed. It was so exciting. Because so these are tournaments... So this is not a tournament like kind of Bellator does where the winner gets a shot of the title or is that or or is that what they're doing or is there any information about that? There's no information beyond that, but I think the fact that they're doing anything outside of just normal fights is yes. exciting and they're listening to fans and I I could care less what the end result is. It's just going to be high quality fighting and tournament style with the UFC's I mean it's just I I never thought it would happen. So it's just yeah. really tournaments kind of in any sport always seem to really get the fans into it. Anytime there's a bracket and you can look at it and I think it's cool. They're going to, so it's going to go across all divisions or there will be different brackets for each weight class that eventually would meet at the end or it's still, we don't know the real. I, I don't know, but I would, I would assume there'd be four different mm -hmm. 
tournament. I don't know. That's maybe they know. all meet. Maybe they all meet like at the end, like the champions of each weight class meet in another tournament. I mean, obviously, we're going off of one tweet, but it seems like this is maybe a developmental tournament this time around to maybe see if it works for a real one, maybe down the road with actual, you know, higher name champion level fighters in the UFC. But listen, I'm always up for these types of, uh, you know, tournament style things, especially in something like the UFC. Yeah. And I think too, like, um, it sounds a little bit like kind of like what PFL is doing where they have these divisions and they fight twice and, and then eventually get to the end. But I, it, it's unique in the sense I don't think there's going to be titles at the end of these tournaments. Mm-hmm. Maybe there'll be a tournament champion. I think maybe it's a mix between like tough and and like PFL's tournament. So who knows? Yeah. I don't know. It's exciting. I'm really excited to see if we hear some more details about that. But I mean, that's soon. UFC 275. That's in ju- June. Yeah, Second June. Week in June. So that's soon. So we're going to start hearing a lot more news soon, too. And I'm curious to see where they're taking these fighters from if they're stealing any of them from one championship. Ooh. One championship has some underrated cards. Yeah. Uh, the only issue, my issue with one championship, I used to like wake up is wake up early and watch them. Is that at least they used to be on so early in the morning over here on the American East Coast? Um, but yeah, some very talented fighters uh, over there for sure. Uh, let's quickly talk a little UFC uh, 273 here before we bring on Kay Hansen. Uh, two title fights. One of my personal favorite fighters, uh, uh, the Korean Zombie. Uh, is fighting Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, and a lot of a lot of big favorites in the top three cards. Is there any fight that uh, the two of you are looking forward to the most this weekend? I mean, outside of the title fights. Go ahead. Go ahead. In title fights this. included. Okay. Well, I I'm personally looking forward to Peter uh, Peter Jan versus Aljamain Sterling. I told you guys last week that this is like this is a personal fight for me because I re- I'm a big Jan fan. And, you know, I was robbed, of course. I bet on him against Sterling last year. Fight closed around like a near pick him, and Jan just completely outclassed him, just as I expected. And the inadverted, not even inadverted, the illegal knee uh, got himself disqualified. There's nothing accidental about that. Nothing accidental about that. Completely dirty. Uh, Got himself disqualified. And now I think he's going to get even with him. And I'm pumped to see it because I also think Jan, you know, we talk about Usman, we talk about Izzy, we talk about Nganu. I think Jan needs to be in the pound for pound conversation. I know that's it's a weird topic to talk about because they're obviously all such different sizes, but to me, Jan is such a complete fighter, and I'm just I'm always excited to see him fight. Yeah, there's been some like really crazy trash talk amongst them for a long time now. I mean, even before their first fight. I think there was like a video that Peter posted of like a a very drunk homeless man, and he was like pretending it was Aljamain and then Al Jermaine was saying recently stuff, you know, stuff about Jan being Russian. So it's like it's gotten dirty and it's getting to the point where it's like a little too much. So I'm looking forward to this to be settled and done Mm -hmm. and like, let's move on to the next thing. Have we decided as the MMA world how to pronounce his first name? Some some just go Peter. Some say Piotr. Some say Petra. Yeah, Piotr. Piotr is, I think, the correct way to say it. But everyone just says Peter. I don't think he he corrects anyone, but yeah. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I have heard several. Out. What's that? My American self comes out. It just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one I think I'm interested in the most is Gilbert Burns and Kamzat Chmaev. Um, Chmaev is a massive favorite. We're obviously going to probably talk about these fights a little bit more once we get in the draft. But uh, big step up in competition. Is he worthy of being this big of a favorite? Uh, time will tell. Uh, and I think Gilbert Burns is one of the more underrated fighters in the UFC. So that's that's probably the yeah. one I'm most uh, looking. But like you even like go down into like the prelims, and there's a lot of good fights. Uh, Rosenstruck against Tybura, uh, mm-hmm. Olinik against Vandera, uh, a good women's fight between Aspen Ladd and, and Raquel Pennington. Like this, this, this is a true, truly stacked card uh, from beginning to end. Amy, yeah, is there he- a fight that? Go ahead. Rick. No, Amy, you can go. But Ian Gary is also a rising I was going to say. So then go. Please. <laughs> please go. Please. I'm, I I'm, think, yeah. I think he's like one of those guys who's like sneaky good and is going to blow up really quick. I think um, he's a name that a lot of people already know. But like the casuals are still not quite, you know, introduced to him. I think he has a lot of personality. Like he has like a Conor McGregor type personality. Um, and he just got married. So he's got hopefully that new, new, there's not a new dad, but like new, new husband power there, you know, like I, I'm really looking forward to that fight. 
personally. Uh, now, Amy, this is in this car is in Florida, correct? So you are not at this one. No, are and you... I kept looking at flights, and I was gonna go just for the you know just to go because I was like having major FOMO about not being there. But gas prices are crazy; I couldn't get out there. So yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, Curtis Calhoun chimes in the chat says Mackenzie Dern versus Tisha Torres gonna gonna be wild. Don't miss that one, of course. Another fantastic. Yes. Uh, women's fight this one on the main card. Obviously, everyone knows Mackenzie Dern is one of the most decorated and skillful jiu-jitsu artists on planet mm -hmm. Earth, male or female. So that's uh, very excited for that one on the main card as well. Um, have you heard anything from your connections about anything going on in the ground uh, leading up this week, Amy? Or a, a, a kind of a different version of the same question. Are you nervous now that you don't have that advantage over us of being on the floor and hearing stuff from the fighters when it comes to the draft? I mean, uh, I'm not nervous because it hasn't quite paid off for me all that much. Like sometimes it has with that Wellington fight. It turned, it really paid off. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't always pay off. Uh, I haven't heard any rumblings, but I'm, I want to ask Kay if she has, cause she's there. So I kind of excited to hear what she has to say. Fighter Speaking reporter, of fighter reporter, Kay Hansen. She's going to hopefully give us, a, give it all here. Yeah. Speaking of Kay Hansen, I believe she's ready to join us. Uh, women's strawweight fighter fighting this week at UFC 273 against Pierre Rodriguez. Kay, thank you so much for joining us. You were the first one to join the show on the actual week that you're fighting. So thank you for that, for taking some time to join us. Uh, are you in the middle of a weight cut right now? How are you feeling in, in general uh, right now? Uh, yeah, I am in the middle of a weight cut. Um, I have a session in a little bit after this. Um, it's my first time going back down to straw weight um, in a little bit, so I'm excited to make the cut back down. Well, kind of. Ex I'm excited to fight back down at my, my at this weight class, but not necessarily cut down. But it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, Kay. I was gonna ask you. You've kind of bounced around straw weight and flyweight. Yeah. This seems like it's your more natural weight class, though. Do you think that's gonna lead to a bounce back here? You know, in this return fight at UFC 273. Definitely. You know, I've had a few fights at 125 throughout my career. Um, however, I feel like most of them, separate from my last one, were against people or girls who could also fight at 115. So I feel like my last fight was my first fight against a true 125er, um, aside from Aaron Blanchfield in the past. Um, so I definitely think 115 is more my division. You know what I mean? Um, I walk around from like 125 to 130 usually. So uh, I didn't have to cut anything for my last fight. So I definitely think I'll be better better suited in uh, the 115 division. Mm. So before what are your we thoughts? Go ahead. Well, go ahead, Amy. <laughs> before we brought you on, this is the, the, tr the trials of having three people interviewing at the same time. <laughs> yeah. um, we Before we brought you on, we were kind of teasing, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. Have you seen your opponent mm -hmm. yet? How, or have you seen any, like, tensions or anything? No, I have not. Uh, you know, I've kind of been more, like, to myself, I'd say. Uh, I didn't have too much on my fight schedule this time. Um, I feel like last time I did because uh, it was more my hometown. So I had like interview after interview. So I was like out and about. Uh, this time is a little more chill. So I've just kind of been keeping to myself. You know what I mean? Especially with a big fight cart like this. Like people have emotions all raised and like everything. So I'm just kind of keeping to myself. Yeah, we were hoping like you might fighting inside. Fights. Sorry, fights. Keep it you go <laughs> Let's say we we thought maybe we'd we'd hear some fight uh fight stories like that Patty and Ilya fight a couple weeks ago. Haven't seen it. So we want you to go out and start something. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you. I see. <laughs> uh what what was it like fighting in, in like uh in your hometown area? Do you feel less pressure this week now without all that extra media attention? Um, yes and no. I mean, I feel like no matter what, there's always pressure. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm really hard on myself too. Um, so I feel like either way there's pressure, but it's all part of the process and you learn to kind of let it help you. You know what I mean? Um, but it was awesome fighting in my hometown. Um, now I'm fighting like the furthest from my hometown. So I don't know one here in Jacksonville, but, uh, either way, it's going to be a great card. So I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Based on pay-per-view fight night, is there a difference? I know your last fight was on UFC 270, but is this one, are you now maybe getting more acclimated to fighting on pay-per-view, maybe more people in the crowd, or do you like that fight night crowd and maybe a little bit uh, more dimmed down? Um, you know, I like the the big crowd. Um, yeah. I feel like it kind of adds some energy, you know, opposed, or uh, aside from, like, my last fight and this fight, all three of my other UFC fights have been at the Apex during, like, the COVID era, so there was literally no one there. So I remember, like, it's so awkward. Like, you just kind of hear <laughs> echoes of coaching, and, like, you still hear the commentators, and I feel like it's just a lot different. It's like, 
uh, a true UFC experience. You know what I mean? When you get to walk out to the crowd. So I'm excited to see how Florida shows up. Which do you, coach do you think you that's going <laughs> to <for> three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 going first this time, Amy. Do you think that's no. going to Kay, do you think that's gonna work to your advantage a little bit because this is your opponent's actual UFC debut? I know obviously she fought Dana White's uh, contender series, but fighting in front of a crowd, do you think this is gonna work to your advantage this time? I mean, yes or no. I feel like at this level everyone's had some kind of crowd experience for the most part. You know what I mean? Um yeah. every single one of my opponents has been a UFC debuter too. So uh, this isn't anything new to me, welcoming someone, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm excited. I think it's definitely going to add energy because uh, she's very aggressive and very tough and moves forward a lot, and I do the same thing. So I think it's going to make for a good fight. Well, I was just going to ask you what coaches you have with you this week. I have Tyler Wombles, Joe Murphy, Chewy Gutierrez. Uh, those are my three cornermen this week. Uh, my head coach is Tyler from Classic Fight Team. Is it the same kind of core you've had for all your fights, or is there a new anyone new or anything changed Um up? So after my debut, I kind of switched it up because my striking needed a lot of work. Um, but I've known everyone for a while. Um, I've been with everyone since um, the Corey McKenna fight. And then I added my boxing coach in for my last fight. Um, so this will be everyone as a core, their third time together, the second time together. But they corner like all of our gym fighters together usually. So they have a pretty good, you know, chemistry when it comes to coaching. Awesome. No, no one's going to say anything. <laughs> Reed, you want to go ahead? <laughs> now I'm oh, nervous. Yeah. I'm going to start talking the same time as someone else. Go ahead, Reed. Yeah, okay. So in terms of, you know, listen, I bet on all these fights. That's what I do. Why should why should we bet on you? Make the sell to me. Why are you going to win this fight? Get back I on actually, track with Australia. I get the betting question a lot. And I will be completely honest. Like, I don't get why people ask me that. Like, it's not my <laughs> What you want with your money? Of course I think I'm going to win. Every fighter thinks they're going to win. I think experience plays a factor in this. You know what I mean? She is 7-0, and 0, um, but I don't know a lot of the names that she has fought. I'm not saying they're not good opponents, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying I have 13 pro fights. This will be my either my 13th or my 14th pro fight. I'm only 22, so I'm young, but this isn't my first rodeo. You know what I mean? I've I've walked the walk for a long time. I've fought tough uh, opponents for a long time, ever since my like second pro fight i've been fighting savages you know uh so i definitely think that experience is going to play a part of this you know what i mean it's not all like brute and aggression um which i feel like she kind of brings to the table for the most part but i think it's gonna it's gonna be a lot more than that this fight i noticed that you are we gonna raise our hands now no, <laughs> i just want you to finger go up <laughs> i i noticed that you on the way to florida you were saying oh i wish i could do a like it an AMA on Twitter, but you, you know, you yeah. don't know how the fans are going to react. And I know like on a very small level, I kind of get yeah. that same kind of interaction with the fans. Uh, do you find it odd that, you know, that fans think that all you can do is fight? Like you're not allowed to go have yeah. a pizza. You know, you I can go on and on about this topic. Um, ever since, I mean, I've fought for Invictus since I was 18. So I'm I'm used to Twitter trolls. You know what I mean? I'm very used to it. It doesn't bother me. You can say what you want. I recently turned them off after my last fight because ever since I've made an OnlyFans, like, it's just a whole nother story. And my biggest thing is, like, number one, I don't have to justify what I do outside of fighting. But number two, pe like, I swear, people think, like, taking photos is going to distract me. Like, you're going to take photos regardless. People take selfies. People post stuff on Instagram. You're going to take photos regardless. People think that me taking photos in my free time is, like, distracting me from fighting which most fighters I know have to get another job. So this is a thing that I can have income. I could work around. I have my own schedule. Like if anything, it helps me focus more. You know what I mean? What am I going to do? Go work a nine to five and try to schedule my training and get the best training around that. Like it doesn't make sense to me. People always throw that. People used to throw that in my face. I'm sure they still do, but my comments are off. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, but people always used to throw that around like, oh, if you're not so worried about OnlyFans. And it's like, it's literally like not that hard to do. It's not a big part of my day. It's not something that like keeps me from training. You know what I mean? I have my training schedule. I can train whenever I want, however I want, and also still make money, you know? So it's so funny when people, people think that you can't be like an attractive woman with an OnlyFans and also fight professionally. I swear if you do one, you can't do the other, which makes no sense to me, but I could go on and on about that subject. <laughs> so And those those are the same people that are subscribing too, which is funny. It's that's like what, yeah, you know, it's it's crazy. And that's why I turned them off. You know, well, so for me, my main thing was like I've been very open with like my past traumas and my past with like sexual abuse and everything. Um and the reason I turned them off is because people were making comments about that. 
people were attacking that. And for me, like I said, you could throw all the shade you want. You could say OnlyFans sucks. That's why you suck, whatever. I don't care. But when people started attacking, like, the sexual abuse and the trauma and stuff like that, that's when I was like, okay, you guys are going too far. And it's always, like, accounts with, like, no followers, no, like, not even a real person. And then you, like, I just found myself, like, doing the bad thing of, like, reading comments. But I would just block people all day because the last thing I want is, like, these nasty comments under all my stuff. You know what I mean? So that's why I ended up taking, like, my comments off just because people were getting too carried away. Like, I'm not... I am not a soft person. You can say what you want, but there's certain lines I feel like that people are too comfortable crossing on the internet. So that's the reason I ended up turning mine off. How do you feel like you brought that there's a state of people are too comfortable on the internet? How do you feel about something like with Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal, where like the, what Colby said brought out a violent reaction? Like how, what were your thoughts there? That's a tricky thing because I do think people get too comfortable running their mouth. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a fan of Colby in his fighting sense, but I'm not a fan of his mouth. I don't think mo most people are. You know what I mean? Um, so you can't just say whatever you want, especially when it comes to, like, family. You know what I mean? Like, you can't attack family. You can't. I think there are certain things that should be off limits. Um, but with that being said, we are athletes. We are professional athletes. So it's kind of a, a, like a double-edged sword, like. George had the opportunity to fight him, to beat him, couldn't do it, and then kind of gets a cheap shot in, you know, while he's having a celebratory dinner. So I get both sides because, like, if I was Mondo, I'd be like, dude, shut the hell up, Colby. You know what I mean? But if you're Colby Covington, like, you're kind of running your mouth, but you also can't just assault people when you want. And it's like, I don't know. It's a, it's a murky waters for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> How much how much better has kind of your headspace been since you've shut off comments? I know there's definitely some days uh, I wish I could just shut off comments. It gets hard in the head to just scroll Twitter comments all day. Has, has it improved your mental health at all? Um, I mean, I would say so. Um, you know, like I said, ever since I was 18, I'm used to seeing them. So it's not something that was right. like um, bothering me too much until it got to the point of, you know, hitting, crossing lines that they shouldn't. Um, and honestly, it's helped a lot because I used to be more of a big social media person. I'm like, you know, this is my market. This is my brand. And ever since I've shut the comments off, like I literally will just post a picture and get off the internet. And I feel mm. like it's a lot easier because you don't like, because my biggest thing is was I didn't care about the comments, but I didn't want like a supporter to come on and just see these nasty comments. And then people would be arguing in my comment section. And I was like, I don't want this place of like war in my comment section. And that's the reason I would like sit back and believe. But then once I realized like, I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my energy. Like, just turn, like, I just limited them. So if I follow you, you can, you know, comment on my stuff. So I just limited them. And it's been a lot easier because it's not like a war zone under my, my comment section. You know what I mean? Um, and, like, it wasn't very often that I'm sitting, I'm not, like, sitting there scrolling all day every day through my comments. But, you know, I'd post a picture and, like, at night when I'm about to go to bed, I go on and I'm just like, what are these people saying? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you even think that, let alone type it and send it? You know? So it's been a lot, lot better. Um, I feel like it just makes my page, like, more wholesome at least for my eyes so i like it i'm probably not gonna change it anytime soon yeah absolutely yeah i got a shout out serial chiller in the chat says k hansen i believe in you girl go get that 50k bonus baby let's go <laughs> thank you That's how awesome. nice would a 50k bonus be this weekend it would be great you know what i mean it's it's been a long time uh i mean for my debut i got a bonus but I thought the Corey McKenna fight was pretty close. You know, I thought I could have pulled it off. So I'm on a two-fight losing streak. Um, and you can make excuses for, for anything you want. But the fact is I'm on a two-fight losing streak. So I'm excited to get back in that win column this weekend. Is there any added pressure that you feel at all, the fact that you're on that two-fight losing streak? No, not at all. I feel like uh, my last fight, I was, like, the extreme, like, favorite. And it was, like, everyone thought I was going to, like, knock her out and all this. And I'm getting all these, like, these crazy things said to me and uh, I feel like it's easier having no expectations. You know what I mean? Like I know what I'm capable of and so does my team and everyone around me. So that's never been an issue. Um, but you can't control what other people think of you or what other people predict. You know what I mean? So for me, I don't think it really matters either way. Um, whether I'm coming off a two fight losing streak, a one fight losing streak, a win, uh, you're going to have pressure regardless. So for me, it's like what it is. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And uh, now I need... Go ahead, Reed. No, I was going to ask, Kay, you just changing gears, you are on a card, two title fights. What are we thinking, the two main, the two title fights? Do you have an opinion? Do you have a side? What are you thinking? I mean, obviously. Uh, I got Jan 
and then I got uh, Volk. Those are my two picks. I uh, I think the Volk fight's going to be good, but I just think Volk's on a different level. You know what I mean? I'm a big Korean zombie fan, um, and I think it'll be a good, like, first or second round, but I think over the championship rounds, I think that's when Volk will, will kind of show his colors because I was there when he fought Brian at, uh, in Vegas for his last title fight. And it was just like, he's crazy. He's on a different level. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yes. so I'm excited to see that one, though. Um, and then for Jan and Aljo, I think Jan's going to win. You know, I think same thing probably in the later rounds. Um, I think Jan is really smart, and he's very dangerous. You know what I mean? So I could see him even, like, waiting out danger and then coming in for the kill. Mm. Are they going to let you stay and watch the fights, or do they ship you back <laughs> to the hotel? I get a couple complimentary tickets um, since I fight on the card. Um, but I am one short and they did. So at the Honda center, they didn't let us back in. Like we couldn't like come back and watch, which kind of sucks because I was like, man, I'm in my hometown and I, you know what I mean? But, um, it makes sense because if you have every fighter and then there are two or three corners coming in where we can, you know what I mean? So I get it. Uh, but I do have a couple tickets. I am one short though. So I might try to like get my coaches in and then try to squeeze in myself with stay in my fighter gear and show them my badge. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll let me in, but, but we'll see. I'd like to, cause I think it's going to be a really good card. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people in the comments right now wishing you good luck. Uh, Jackson Chump, uh, Kay Hansen, good luck. Much love. Melissa Delgadio, I'm sorry. I definitely just put your last name. Good luck, Kay Hansen. Looking forward to seeing you fight. Uh, so Thank we're all going to be cheering for you. I do have one more sports betting related question really quick. I know that you said you get a lot of ones asking why people should bet on you. But I'm curious, and I asked this to basically any fighter that, that, uh, that we talk to or any athlete from a different sport that I talk to. Do you ever... Look at the odds. Are you curious what your odds are ahead of a fight, or do you just not even think about that? No, I don't even – I don't really pay attention. If I'm being honest, I have no idea how betting works. I mean, like, obviously I have Fair a general enough. idea. I'm not, right. like, dumb. I – for me, like, when I look at odds and I'm like this or that, how, I don't I don't know how any of it works. And for me, it's just, like, um, obviously, like, everyone has their own opinion, and it's, like, a lot of these people that bet don't fight. So, for me, I'm just, like – if you see my opponent who's seven and zero oh and hits really hard and like, okay, she's gonna beat her because she's seven and five and she's on a two fight. You know what I mean? And it's just like, mm. of course, I'm gonna be the underdog. So for me, I kind of can already guess who people think is gonna win just based on what they see on the outside. You know what I mean? So for me, I don't even usually bother to try to figure out if I'm the favorite or the underdog. I just kind of have tunnel vision and focus on what I'm doing. I will say we've had UFC fighters on the show and actually make predictions with us, and they have beaten us in our competition every single time that they're on the show. So uh, being fighters is is clearly uh, more beneficial when betting than uh, being actual sports bettors like myself and Reed are. Um, we do have to ask you this. I know obviously you think you're you're, you're going to win. Do you have yeah. an official prediction whatsoever, do, or, or are you kind of anti-prediction? Do you have a prediction for your fight? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not big on predictions, you know, because at the end of the day, both of us are looking for a finish. You know what I mean? And and I have my methods, and I've also improved a lot. You know what I mean? I think I showcased uh, a lot more striking my last fight, and I'm excited to showcase it against someone uh, my size. You know, and uh, but I mean, I think we're both uh, we're both tough, and I think uh, it's gonna end in a finish either way. But it's gonna be on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Amy, Reed, unless you two have any further questions here, we can let Kay go. Kay, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck this weekend. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining the week your fight. Good luck with your weight cut uh, and everything uh, leading up to this weekend. We will be re rooting for you. So thank you very much for joining us, and, uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. Awesome you stuff. First time we've ever had a fighter of the week up. It made me a little bit more nervous, to be honest. <laughs> Good luck to incredibly, her. No, incredibly, her. incredibly insightful, though. And, you know, I'm definitely pulling for her. And, you know, she definitely gave some good insight, especially on fight week, like what her mentality is going into this fight. Because, you know, like we said, coming, you know, two losses, she's looking for a win. But so is, you know, Rodriguez. So this, you know, I'm excited for that uh, fight on the undercard. Yeah. So now we'll be getting to the uh, bet draft part of the show. Um, now it's going to be awkward if we just interview Kay Hansen and then one of you bet against her, but uh, <laughs> we'll see if anyone's willing to do that. Uh, for those of you who are new, who have not watched this, uh, this is kind of our little sports betting fun portion of the show that we do. We do a snake draft with picks for this weekend's card. Uh, so what we are going to do is three, maybe four rounds, depending on how the time goes, because we still have uh, Matt Favola that we got to uh, get on here uh, at the top of the hour. Um, but it's a snake draft. Someone's going to pick first. 
they pick who their best bet of the card is. Uh, when that fighter is selected, nobody else can obviously draft that bet. Uh, and it will be based on odds, obviously. Uh, and then we will have our picks. And then whoever finishes with the best record up the most amount of units at the end of the card is deemed the winner. I am still rooting or looking for my first draft win. Reed and Amy. Uh, Amy, I think you have one or two. Uh, and I Reed, you have a couple one. wins as well. I mean, I yeah, think my so. one is is only because we didn't count the fighter that week too. Yeah. So, like, technically, I don't even. You know I, what I mean? Like, I think you have two, but I think one of them was when we had a fighter on and they won. I think you have one okay. solo win. I think okay. you do. Well, yeah, I think Amy has one. I think I also won another one when the fighter was on, though. But I have another one also. Right. All I know is though, Ian, you're still over. I have no wins team. at all. Got to got to get <laughs> off the schneid here. Pay per view week. We just had Kay Hansen on. You're dressed to the nines. You got to get off the schneid. I went over uh, three in, last oh. week, though. That's really bad. That's, I've never done that bad before. No, but to be fair, Amy, like I said, you chose three underdogs. So sometimes if you're getting a little That's risky true. with underdogs, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, and chime in the chat. I missed you. I think I mispronounced your, your name last time, so I apologize. Please correct me. I think it's Zan Bando. Because I think last time I said Zane, and I think that was incorrect. Um, that, Illinois yeah. writer... Uh, I believe Illinois writer for us. Uh, big card. This and he writes for fans that did for. MMA as well. He does. Yes, that's yes. correct. Um, I, yeah, I just remember he stormed the court. Was it Illinois? I'm pretty sure it was Illinois. Yes. There's yeah. footage of him storming the court, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and you nailed perfect. it. Nailed it. Yeah. Awesome. So let's get into the draft here. Reed, you won out of the three of us, even though Jalen Turner won the last draft. So pick the order. Go ahead. Uh, what are you going with uh, this week? So. Oh. Order wise, I have a few leans. I don't feel very strong. Like I need something. Like I, I have a few that I like, but nothing I'm super strong on just yet. So I'm gonna go Amy, Ian, myself, and then obviously snake it back around with myself, Ian, Amy, and then back again. Okay, so I'm second. Also, uh, important rule: the first round is undercard only. So no main card uh, fights uh, in the first round. Rounds two and three, we will be jumping into uh, the main card as well. But you also can still obviously uh, uh, pick prelim fights. So um, let's get into it. Let's do it. Okay. So I have to start. Okay. I'm going to go probably all underdogs again, just because that's how oh, I roll. I like, I like it. it. I'm a big underdog guy, so I like it. Yeah. So hopefully my picks were correct. I think I have them written down right. Okay. So I'm going to go Aspen Ladd for my first pick. Good pick. Um, I think that she has so much power. I think she's had some issues, obviously, with weight cutting. Why are you looking confused, Ian? I'm not sorry. I'm just <laughs> tweeting. I'm tweeting out the link to remind people we're jumping <laughs> yeah. in the draft. I'm sorry. Go like, ahead, Amy. Is something wrong? Is she not on the card? <laughs> um, it's so. I just have to preface it when I'm not at an event. I lose track of like who's fighting and what on what part of the card and like who pulled out and all this. I'm like not as in the loop there, so I always have to double check when I'm not there. So anyways, yes. Um, so Aspen Lad. Yeah, I think that she's had obviously issues with weight cutting, but I think she's finding her groove. Um, I think it's weird that she's an underdog, to be honest. Uh, I just, I don't know. Something tells me Aspen, something whispered Aspen Lad to me. So, And I believe Pennington's coming in on short notice, if I'm not mistaken, either. So yeah. that, you yeah. know, we've discussed that, that that's sometimes counterproductive. So we'll see. I, I kind of agree with that pick. I like it. Yay. I feel good about it. <laughs> All right, so it's on me. Um, I was supposed to send the production team my pick. I apologize for that. We're just going to have to go, go uh, on the fly here. I'm going to go with um, a fighter who is actually from my home province. This is not only a Canadian. This is a Nova Scotian. <laughs> and I think this is only the third Nova Scotian to fight in the UFC. If my math is correct, Chris Kalaitis I know is one. I think there was one other. Mike Mallett. From Halifax, Nova Scotia. Minus really? 205. Again, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that either until I started researching this card a little bit further. <laughs> um, he is making his UFC debut. He uh, did fight on, on Dana White's Contender Series. Minus 205. Perfect. Um, and in his Dana White Contender Series fight, he pulled off his submission win in 39 seconds. So getting a win in 39 seconds is one thing. Yes. Getting a submission win. And 39 seconds is a completely other thing. So this is a guy who's fought seven or eight times. He's seven and one. 
All seven of his wins have come by finish. So I know obviously he's fighting a, a guy who's a little bit more experienced than Mickey Gall. Um, but I mean, you can't deny those seven finishes. Uh, he is a little bit of a chalky favorite, but I want to get my win under belt uh, under uh, under my belt here in the first round. And I didn't want to let you two have a chance to pick my hometown hero, who is now immediately my favorite fighter in the UFC, because he's from <laughs> Halifax. Mike Mallet, Mike Proper Mallet. Oh, of course, TJ Grant. I got to shout out TJ Grant was the greatest, one of the greatest Nova Scotia athletes of all time. Out of title fighting against ben, Benson Henderson, got a bad concussion, never fought in the UFC ever again. One of the greatest what ifs in UFC history uh, is TJ Grant. Shout out to him. I used to see him uh, around Halifax all the time. Uh, shout out to, I wonder if, I wonder if Mike Mallet trains with TJ Grant. That'd be interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, actually it looks like he's team Malfa male. So he might maybe move to California, but yeah, Mike Mallet's my first pick. Uh, I've talked enough. Reed, go ahead. Uh, your first pick of the, or your first pick, last pick of the five of the first round. Yeah. Um, I like the Aspen Ladd pick. That was one of the people on my short list. I was not looking at Mike Mallet to be honest, but I got two picks here. So for the first one, I will go with Marcin Tibera against uh, Jarzino Rosentrake. Listen, I get he has Rosentrake has the power. He could finish this fight in a minute. I understand that. But Tibera's kind of like a grinder. I think he's going to get this to the mat, at least up against the cage. Sap the power of Rosentrake, plus 125. I like Tybur as a small underdog. This reeks of Tybura by decision, like a really gross 30-27, 29-28 win. Again, I think Rosentrake has one path to victory. It's Kenny Land, that knockout punch. I think Tybura is going to be able to hold up here. I'm not expecting a really pretty fight. I like Tybura plus 125. That that pick was on my list. Uh, you yeah. stole one on me there. I was thinking, yeah, I, yeah, I like that quite a bit. Um so that's the end of the first round. Let's recap the first round. Uh, if uh, if we have the graphic ready there. Amy, what was your first pick again? There it is. Aspen Lad. That's right. Aspen Lad as an underdog. Uh, Mike Mallet, myself. I was the only guy person to go favorite in the first round. Minus 205. Big favorite, but just give me the win right off the bat. Uh, and then Marcin Tibura, plus 125 for the first round. How and bad would it feel? When your first round loses, though, when you're like for sure loses, because you know? <laughs> that's the, yeah, the my draft is always like, Ugh. like I'm never like so sure someone's gonna win, so I never really get that disappointed. Okay, low sense? expectations. See, yeah. I just can, I'm convinced that everything, you know, all these are hits. So you know, I'm predicting three and zero off the bat. So you know, it's the tail of two tail of two sides. Yes. Yeah, and I tweeted this out uh, like last week. Um, if, if my bet hits, it's because I handicapped it right and I'm a genius. And if it didn't hit, it's not my fault. It's because the <laughs> yeah. bad person at a bad training camp, the, the judges screwed me over. Uh, losses are never my fault, and I will stand by that. Uh, Reed, uh, you, we are back to you because of Snake Draft. First pick, second yes. round, main cards wide open. I hope you um, aren't taking the person who I'm taking because I forgot it was a Snake Draft, so I thought I was up next. Uh, but, yeah, you get two picks in a row. Go ahead. This is I am still on the main or still on the prelim card, I believe. Good. Yes. Uh no, just kidding. It's on the main card. Uh, I'm going Vin, I'm gonna go Vince Pichel as a no, small I think it's prelim. prelim. That's okay. That? Even if it is. Oh yeah, I see he was on the main card, but we're good on main card, right? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Okay. He's hold on. Yes. So yes, Vince is main card. Yeah, Vince Pichel oh, yes. as a moderate favorite. I watched Mark Madsen in his last fight, split decision win. I wasn't very impressed. And Pichel, he's a little bit older. I know he's 39, but he has a crazy gas tank. He's able to really push the pace. And I think that Madsen, Olympic wrestler, he's going to try and grapple. But Pichel has great uh, grappling defense. He's a veteran. I, I like Pichel in this fight. I think he's going to end up looking like a bigger favorite. Maybe it does go to the cards, but I think Michelle has knockout power. He could kind of wrap this up with some ground and pound, but as a small favorite, I don't think that this is like too much of a price to pay. So um, I'll take uh, Michelle as a small favorite. You cannot bet against a mustache, mustache like that. <laughs> that It is a very enticing part of uh, getting him in the draft, having yes. easily the most electric looking draft so far. People love why why do people love mustaches so much? <laughs> there was a guy on St. Peter's in the March Madness tournament. He had a mustache and then it, it turned into I'm just gonna grow a mustache just for my brand alone, just so people like me more. <laughs> I don't know what it is about a mustache. Can you either. grow a mustache? Can, 
Can we get the uh, the graphic back up there? Can you grow a mustache like this though? Like I can't grow anything like that. I would grow I've never like your mouth. I've never tried to grow one that thick. I've done uh, Movember in the past where I grow for the month in November and it does get pretty thick, but uh, I, I think I would have to let it grow for a few months. And I, I don't know if it, get, it could get to that point. And in fairness, you're right. That is a very nice yeah, field oat mustache. That's like, a, he has like more hair on his mouth than he does on his head. Like mm -hmm. this is like, you know, that's like grown yeah. out and like really well kept. But yeah. anyway. That's for another episode when we grow out the mustache. <laughs> yeah. The mustache episode. Oh my yeah, gosh, we're we, should do we should draft the best facial hair in the UFC. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> A mustache draft. Um, all right, so it's back to me. You did not take the fighter that I was looking to take, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to take uh, the women's fight uh, on the main card, and I'm going to take Mackenzie Dern. Minus 115, very slight favorite here. Uh, pretty si simple handicap. I mean, I, I talked about this, I think it was at the top of the show. Mackenzie Dern is one of the most uh, decorated fighters, uh, decorated jiu-jitsu fighters in the world, uh, male or female. If she can take her opponent down, she wins the fight because she just submits everyone. Now, to be fair, that has been an issue because her uh, takedown mm. accuracy is 10%, which is not good. That's yeah. a terrible takedown accuracy, to be fair. She is certainly not a wrestler. Um, but Tisha Torres has a takedown defense of 58%. So not necessarily the best takedown defense in the world. Uh, she's been taken down twice in uh, two of her last three fights. Uh, so I will take Duran as a slight favorite here and hope that she can take Tisha Torres down to the ground. But I mean, this is what basically every single Mackenzie Duran fight comes down to. If she takes her down, it's going to be hard for her opponent to win. Uh, so I'm going to bank on uh, her being, being able to get Tisha Torres down and pull off this mission. So Mackenzie Duran, slight favorite. Uh, and this one, uh, reach advantage too. Now that we're looking at the draft, I kind of like a reach advantage there. And her striking has come along. Uh, when she first was in the UFC, her striking was absolutely abysmal, to be fair. I mean, her strength was obviously her jiu-jitsu, a world champion in jiu-jitsu. But her striking has come along, uh, which is always nice to see. It's good to see some, some jiu-jitsu fighters uh, get some striking. So and uh, she's Mackenzie Dern her, is my second pick. She's found her weight cut kind of recipe i think as well she was struggling mm. with that a little bit and she doesn't seem to be struggling like it's not like this Ooh, is she gonna make weight anymore like it used to right be. i did forget about that but yeah early in her ufc career she had some weight cut issues that's right mm -hmm. uh so Mackenzie dern my second round pick amy we are back to you uh your last last pick of the second round um i'm gonna go another underdog i'm going gilbert burns which i think everyone's gonna oh. laugh in my face no, I, I, just... I was I thought that was gonna drop to me next round. So I'm, oh, I'm okay. happy this is I'm happy we're drafting this though, so we could talk about this fight. Yeah, because okay, so obviously Kamzat is crazy good. Like there's no argument there. Um, you know, everybody's saying like, oh, you know, he he's he's only starting out in the UFC and all this stuff, which is true, but he's gotten to a level that most people starting out in the UFC have not gotten to. I do believe that Gilbert Burns is going to be the toughest opponent so far. Um, I think it's just, it's going to be such a good fight. I feel like it's going to be fight of the night. I think it's going to go to the scorecards. Um, I just, I can't, I can't count out Gilbert Burns. Like he's just too good. Um, I think we'll see a third round for the first time because I don't think Kamzat's gone to the third round. And I think that we're just, he's just not going to be ready for it. I, I think he's just not ready for that kind of a fight. Interesting that you just said it, it's going to go to the third round, because if it does go to the third round, he actually said something, I think it was this week, maybe it was last week, days are all just mushing together between March Madness and the Masters for me right now, um, but he said that uh, he has he can only breathe out of one nostril. Um, now, obviously, oh, in his fights, the output that he has in his fights is insane, but he's never been to a third round. Is he going to be able to put out that level of output for, th for three straight rounds, especially considering the fact that um, that he can only breathe out of one nostril. But yeah, I believe if I remember correctly, and uh, um, Melissa says, I agree, Amy. I, I feel people underestimate Burns. He will definitely be a challenge for Kamzat. Kamzat. We, we all, I think we all, Kamzat, sorry. Kamzat? I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know. That's what I call him. Chemayev is definitely the way he pronounces yeah, last name. Do all three of us agree Gilbert Burns is being underrated in this fight? I think yes. we can all agree with that, right? Yes. yes. But at the same time, Shemaev might be that good. Like, again, I, I think that this, it, we could acknowledge this is a huge step up for him. But at the right. same time, he all, like, Shemaev might also be, like, on another level that 
but this is like baking it in. And this is like something I like to fade all the time. Like this, like trendy prospect, but Jemaya might, I think we could all agree. He might actually just be on another level. And I, I think, think even to be, sorry, Amy, go ahead. I was going to say, and I don't think if that he loses to Burns that he was like, 100%. that it all was wrong and he wasn't as good as he was. Like, I don't think that's the right. case at all. I think that, that, you know, he's still so new. He, if he, if he loses, it's just a, one peg in the ladder. You know, it's like, it's not the end. It's not like, oh, he was a, a wash. He was just kidding. He wasn't that great. I mean, he's definitely a good fighter. Um, Yeah. And I think it's it, like, I think Chemayev is, he should be the favorite, the betting favorite, but I think the odds are just completely mispriced. Like yeah. what was Gilbert Burns plus four or five hundred yeah, dog? Like yeah. that's insane. That that's a like that's like a, a massive mismatch. Like if you're if you're basing it off of uh, off the odds, and I, I think it's much closer than that. But Jermai probably does deserve to be the favorite. Uh, but yeah, I think the quote that I I said whatever injury caused the scar that he has also messed up the nostril on that side. So if if I remember correctly, don't don't sue me if I'm not. But that injury has now caused him to only be able to breathe out of one nostril, which is crazy that still even be able to be as dominant of a UFC fighter and put out the output that he has with breathing only out of one nostril, but like I said, has never been to the to a third round of a fight mm-hmm. and has only been to the second round three times. Mm-hmm. My my one issue with Burns in this fight is he puts himself in a lot of like dangerous situations and Chimaev right. could really pounce on that. Like if I imagine Burns is going to come forward and he's going to initiate action. The question is, can he hold up and weather that first storm, that first kind of exchange? Because Chemayev is going to bring the power. He's dangerous on the ground. Can Burns get out of that situation? You know, really like kind of feel it and be like, okay, I know what this guy's about. Let's try and see how the second round goes and so on. So I can see it ending really early. But then, of course, if Burns could kind of hold up, like I don't, to me, it's Chemayev early, Burns late as like a handicapping approach. To this fight burns is seven and one in his last eight fights with the only loss coming to the number one pound for pound fighter yep. in the world and now he's a plus four or five underdog like, that's just crazy to me happens quite uh, that, <laughs> that completes the second round amy you are going to pick again but before we get to your uh first pick of the third round let's recap here uh amy two underdogs uh off the bat we'll see if she goes three underdogs once again um, I'm going with a second favorite. Mackenzie Dern's obviously uh, only a slight favorite, though. And uh, Reed, you're going with uh, Moustache Mania himself. Uh, what is it? Vince <laughs> Michelle? Uh, yes. Minus 135. So now you have a slight underdog and a slight favorite. So uh, three people, three different uh, strategies so far in this draft. So it's interesting to see how that's going to turn out. Amy, back to you for your third round pick. We'll see how we are doing on time. It might be your last pick. It might not be. Well, actually, I'm just texting right now with Matt. He's just asking how to get in. So give me one second. Talk amongst yourselves, and I'll give him the uh, intro to get in. Then we can <laughs> pull him on in. All right, then we'll bring up the comment from Serial Chiller, who says, I've got Tibera too. Trust me, he's going to ground and pound him. Ground and pound him out. No takedown defense from, um, I believe he just misspelled his name, and now that's thrown off my pronunciation. Garzino. Garzino. Ro- Rosenstruck. Or, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, I will sir. literally never conquer pronouncing people's names right, and UFC is the worst. Um, yeah, but yeah, there. yeah, you picked him, and I was going to pick him for the exact same reason because if it's if it's going to be a stand up fight, I will take Rosenstruck every yeah. single time. Um, but if he fights a guy who can take him down, Curtis Blades took him down three times in their fight last time. That's that's dangerous. You never want to bet on uh, a kickboxer when he's when he's taking on a guy who can take you down. So Absolutely. I agree with that. Okay, so Matt should be joining us any second, but I think it's safe for me to do my pick since I am picking his teammate, Aljamain Sterling. You, you're I'm taking go- the underdog route. We're taking the underdogs of the underdogs. Yeah. Yeah. I I just I don't know why. Like I feel like if I'm getting if I'm betting on someone, I don't know. Like it's it's so easy to bet on the favorite. It like doesn't excite me. It doesn't like give me any like like, ooh, I want to watch this now. Or like, I want that like feeling of that nervousness, you know? So that's why yep. I always go with underdogs. Um, but yeah, I think uh I think Algermain, I know that we talked about this before. I think it's gonna be difficult. I think it's gonna be a really close fight. Um, but Algermain has something to prove a little bit more than Piotr has. I believe that he has to show people what he couldn't show them the first time. And I think I said this last time, we did not see, there's something was off with Aljamain. 
I don't know if it was nerves or what, but there were, it wasn't the, what I've seen in him. And so I think if he can deliver what I expected the first fight, then I think he gets it. And I think it'll be a decision. I think it might be split. It might, might be controversial. And we might have to see a third fight, which is not something I necessarily want to see because I said I want to put it aside. But yeah, I'm, I'm putting my money on Aljamain. I mean, basically, Amy, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up where if either of your two big underdogs win, you're going to win the draft. You certainly don't need both of them to win. If one of them wins, uh, you will be the winner and I will will lose my 10th straight draft. (laughs) (laughs) A couple comments really quick before we get back to me. Serial Chiller chiming in in again. I agree with all your picks, Amy. Aljo (laughs) vs. Jan is a 50-50 fight. And there was value on the odds for Sterling. Interesting take. I I don't I I don't agree to be honest. Uh, I I think I Jan is a met, much better time, fighter. Not the second time. <laughs> I was with him on the Tybura thought, not the Sterling thought. <laughs> I will say though, I do agree with Amy that uh, Aljamain Sterling did not look himself in the first fight. I I do agree with that. He certainly was not at his best. There's no doubt about that. But is his best good enough? If he does bring his best this weekend, will it be good enough? Time will tell. I well, have been wrong plenty of times that, before. He had that neck surgery too, so no. that could have been affecting him in the first fight. Certainly. Um, now that that's fixed, we may see a totally different fighter. You know, you never know. I okay, we're we should... going to get to Matt here in a couple minutes. Uh, we will do the last two picks here. We will not do a fourth round here since Matt's ready to join us here in a couple minutes. Melissa, uh, once again, Melissa, I'm going to butcher your last name, Del Gel- Delgadillo. I'm that assuming the right. L's are silent. Maybe, maybe not. It would be crazy if Aljamain beat uh, Piotr for the win. It would be crazy. That would be wild. It's possible. Certainly. De- definitely could be possible. Big underdogs have certainly won plenty of times in the past, especially in title fights. Um, back to me. My final pick of the draft. I'll try to be quick here. I'm going to go Alexi Olenek uh, in a pick against Jared Van Dera. Uh, That's what I, I wanted. Backed. I love the boa. Did I, did I just steal your pick? Yeah, you stole mine. Good, because you steal my picks all the time. So finally, a little revenge in that factor. Um, but I backed Jared against uh, Andre Arlovsky and, la- uh, and lost. That was a split decision. Not going to make that same mistake again. Uh, this kind of is similar to the Tibera rosenstruck fight. Vandera has a takedown defense of just 20%. And now he's fighting a guy uh, who has 46 career submission wins. Once again, 4-6 career submission wins that is an insane number especially at that weight class uh so like i said easy handicap a guy who can't defend takedowns is taking on the best uh one of the best heavyweight submission artists of all time so alexio linick uh, as a pick of minus 110 yeah i i agree i'm probably gonna look to bet uh boa by submission boa round one um again it's mine like a coin flip i just think I mean, both these guys are going to gas out. He's so old, but, like, what's Vandera going to do? If this hits the mat, he's toast. So one takedown's all he needs. I don't think he's going to knock him out or anything. So I agree with you there. He was kind of my next pick. I think my picking third strategy kind of backfired for me. Speaking of which, take us home, yeah, Reed. You got the last pick of the draft. Um, Yeah, the only person left on my sheet. I'm going with Mickey Gall as an underdog. Obviously had to get oh. Ian back there. Yeah. Oh. I'm going I, against I, my hometown boy. I'm gonna go against Nova Scotia. I'm gonna go against Halifax. Bring it on. <laughs> Never bet against Nova Scotia. Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a pure just price. Gall's more of a veteran. I uh, I don't love uh, Mallet's kind of lack of activity. He's only fought twice since 2019. I know he had the early finish in the Contender Series, but I don't know Gall's kind of a veteran. He's fought in uh, at least like professional UFC fighters before. I'll take the experience at a you know nice price, but I'm not super confident in it, but it's a nice payout. So give me Mickey Gall plus 170. Good. You shouldn't be confident. <laughs> Betting against no. As I said, money. as I said, I go, I think I'm going three and oh every week, but now I end up with a guy I think is going to lose, but let's, let's bring it home. Mickey Gall. Let's get back Nova Scotia. Some of the toughest people in North America over in the Maritimes, bud. good, good, <laughs> good luck there. Uh, so that, that concludes our draft. Uh, I'm feeling very good about my draft and I've said that every time and I've never won one. So if we can, uh, before we bring Matt on, let's recap here. Uh, Amy going Aspen lad, Gilbert Burns, Aljamain Sterling. Uh, I'm going, uh, Mike Mallet from Halifax, Nova Scotia 
Mackenzie Dern and Alexei Olenek and Reed Dragon Marson, Tibera Vince Pichel and Mickey Gall, two underdogs uh, and a favorite. So uh, very different drafts from all three of us. It's excited to see uh, how that turns out this weekend. Serial Chiller, another comment. It's unwise to bet favorites in this card, says Serial Chiller. There will be some big surprises on a big pay per view card. All right. Cool. Time I like Serial Chiller. I like Serial Chiller. Serial Chiller in the comments. I'm Serial Chiller. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be just my kind of luck if I go 3 0, but because I bet favorites, like <laughs> one of the, yeah, Amy's I... big underdogs hits, and then I just lose anyways, even though I go 3 0. Because technically, like, I could go 3 0 and still lose. If one of the Amy's big underdogs hit, so yeah, but you you took like two like they're like favorites, so nothing crazy. crazy. Yeah, like that wasn't super crazy or anything. The mallet pick is obviously you know a considerable favorite, but nothing crazy. All right, let's bring him in uh, to wrap up the show. Here we are going to talk to UFC lightweight fighter Matt Frivola. Hello, my there friend. Thank you for joining us. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining uh, us. Yeah, yeah, thank you for joining uh, us, Matt. I got to ask you right away. Uh, you wore a Patty Pemblet wig uh, there a couple weeks ago. Do you want to fight this guy? Are, are you going to get the chance to fight uh, fight this guy? Uh, I, I got to say, you look kind of cute in the wig there. Uh, <laughs> what was that all about, man? Oh, yeah. I mean, the fit makes sense, and it's going to happen. Um, you know, Patty has got a lot of hype, and uh, I don't know anyone one else better to uh, derail another hype train than, than your boy, the Steamroller. So I, I think that that's going to be a great fight. You know, he's tough everywhere, but so am I. And it's going to be fireworks, you know. He says that these scousers can't get knocked out. But, you know, I'm going to definitely put that to the test. So I'm excited. So is you, there – Go ahead, Reed. No, I was going to ask, is there any movement on this fight? Or is this – you're just calling him out and waiting to hear back from him? Can we – is there a timeline? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely calling him out. And my, my manager, Jason House – is pushing it to the UFC, but it sounds like uh, they want to wait for them to go back to London for Patty. So I might have to wait till they go back to London. You know, I'm trying to get three fights in this year, so I'm hoping that they could go back. You know, at, at August, but you know, this is a big enough fight that I'm willing to wait a little bit to uh, to get this fight. So we'll yeah. See. So you wouldn't want to fight someone in the meantime. Uh, we'll see, you know, if it's, if it's August, I think that's like the latest I would be willing to wait. You know, if, if, if they tell me, you know, August, we're going back to London, you got a co-main event spot against Patty, then, then we're good to go. But, uh, if not, you know, I told them I'm going to be ready all, all summer, you know, so June, July, uh, I'll be ready. So we'll see. Do you think Patty is being overrated because of, you know, his accent and the crazy antics on the mic and his weird haircut. Do you think he's being overrated because of that? Because he's kind of a fan favorite at this point. Um, a little bit, but he's good. No doubt. You know, he was a double champ for cage warriors. Um, and he's got, you know, he's got a submission, he's got a knockout, so he's pretty well-rounded. Um, but he really hasn't been tested. And, and that's, right. that's what I, that's what I like about this fight is, you know, I want to go in there and really test him on the ground, test him on the feet. And and really see if he if the hype is real because I I don't think it is I think I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna steamroll him I don't think he's ever fought anyone like me that that could just go in there and and beat him everywhere which is what I plan to do. It's in the you name. mentioned you mentioned steamroll. Cage Warriors you mentioned two division champion well I want to pull up a picture of you with Conor McGregor from Fight Island I think uh, our yeah. there we go I want to know like what was it like. Being that close to Connor, you know, did he? Did you guys talk? Can you kind of give us a little insight there? Yeah, yeah that was real cool. Uh, we, were, I was just up at the Abu Dhabi pool, and I was like swimming, and then and then McGregor rolls up to the other side of the pool, and we're all, you know, we're all talking like, oh, McGregor's over there. So then, me and Billy Q, we just got it. We had to go walk over and say what's up to him, and you know, I walked right up to him and and was just kind of just like, what's up, Connor? You know. Uh, the first UFC event I ever went to was uh, when Connor fought uh, uh, Dennis Seaver in Boston. And I was just telling him about the atmosphere, the Irish fans that he brought. And then, you know, Billy Q was getting stopped by a security. You know, Billy, Billy Q <laughs> couldn't get past uh, Connor's uh, uh, security. But eventually, you know, we waved him, got him through. Uh, and yeah, we, he was actually, he was very cool. You know, he was, he was humble when I was talking to him. And, you know, for being such a superstar, it was. It was cool to kind of just talk to him and like he was uh, 
normal person, but I will say his Irish accent was so thick, I could almost like not even understand him. <laughs> uh, Matt, you've been training with Aljamain Sterling, I believe, uh, heading, uh, leading up to this fight. Uh, what are your kind of thoughts uh, on his chances, kind of how last fight went, uh, how Aljamain's looking uh, heading into this fight? What are your thoughts on him? Oh, I am so excited. I'm at, I'm going to Jacksonville tomorrow. I'm I'm pretty pumped about this. Uh, you know, Aljo's been looking so good in camp. You know, I, I watched uh, his last sparring session and watched him go like three hard rounds with Marab and then put Dennis Bazooka right on him for the next two rounds. And he was he's he's on point. Let's just say he's on point everywhere. You know, his striking, uh, his wrestling, his his jujitsu is is top notch and uh i think that's that's the real game changer and as aldo as aljo is such an underdog you know if aljo gets gets it to the ground gets his back he just needs one opportunity to uh to finish the fight and he's always got that that in his back pocket and i think that uh you know his cardio is on point now he figured that out he's a very like analytical guy you know he he broke down that last fight that last camp so much you know he and and I think he's he's really gonna make uh, the the corrections and and he's gonna come out there and shock the world like us Long Island guys do all the time, you know, Chris Wybe and Matt Sarah, and it's gonna be Aljamain Sterling next. So sorry, guys, I got booted. I think um, I wanted to ask before we get too far into Aljo, um, that fight, that picture with Connor was that fight island. Was that the fight where your opponent was? pulled out because of that weird thing he had done. Is that the fight? Yep, yep. That was when okay. Otman, Otman and Zaitar like smuggled his, oh, his bag of, right. of potatoes in <laughs> and he cut him because he smuggled a bag of potatoes. Um, and then he also hasn't fought in over a year because I think he needs time to get the potatoes out of his system. You know, that's another <laughs> guy I want to, I really want to beat up. You know? uh, but we'll see. This guy doesn't even fight, you know, but you know, I'd like, I really want the Patty fight. I think that's the fight to make, but eventually I'm going to have to beat up Otman. <laughs> Did you hear that he came into media, the media room a couple, like a month after that with like a bag of potatoes and was waving it around, like joking. And I was like, you should not be doing that. Yeah, the guy's a <laughs> joke. The room. Yeah. He, he's not, he's not a fighter. He just likes to roll around in like little uh, scooters when he's in Vegas and go on Instagram and, you know, he's not a he's not a real fighter. Uh, Matt, do you? Uh, and I asked Kay this uh, when when we interviewed her, her at the top of the show. Do you ever look at uh, betting odds at all for your fight or for anyone else's fights? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd say the majority of my buddies are degenerate gamblers, so Love I'm it. always they're always asking me all the all the picks. But then they ask me the picks, and whatever I say, they usually bet the opposite, and you know you. <laughs> They usually fade me, I guess. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, I've definitely pay attention to all that. Well, so, so what are your what are your thoughts on the card this weekend? Obviously, the Aljo fight, but just in general, any kind of big takeaways heading into UFC two seventy three? Yeah, the Chimaev, you know, the Chimaev fight with Burns. I mean, I think they're really disrespecting Burns. I think you know Burns is Burns is is a legit. A great, you know, he could he could bang, and then his jujitsu is top notch. And I think at that, what what is he like, uh, like a like a plus four hundred or something? Yeah, four or five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think that's definitely a, a live dog right there. You know, Chimaev has not been tested yet. You know, I think I I'm not gonna jump on the train, the Chimaev train, until I see him overcome some adversity. He needs to get rocked and come back. Or he needs to, you know, have a good fight with, you know, somebody who's really going to test them before I really jump on that train. I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to watch it. I love it. You know, I love watching him and just all the hype. Uh, but I think that Burns is a live dog for sure. Have you ever bet on your own fight? No, I've never bet on my own fight, but all my buddies do. <laughs> and I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to be uh, putting a nice bet on Aljamain this weekend. Awesome. Do you that's have what, an idea? How... Go ahead. Really quick, that that's what I was going to ask. Aljamain, you have probably looked at the odds, plus 365. So you're saying he is worth the bet this weekend as a big underdog. 
Oh, a hundred percent. He, you know, right. I've never seen him look this good. He, he's, I mean, he's a freak in the gym. He's, his jujitsu is, is unreal. His stand up is, is very unorthodox, but it's very effective. And then his wrestling, his MMA wrestling doesn't get, you know, it doesn't get better. Um, I just, you know, I know Peter Yan is, is amazing fighter and, and, and how, you know, he calculates people and all that. And, but you, you even rewatch that last fight. You know, Aljo was out working him and won the first first two rounds, um, and then he faded. And I think that that he cr- he corrects that that cardio, and he's able to outwork Jan, and and eventually you know get it to the ground and and really just just maul him. And uh, and it's gonna it's gonna shock the world like like uh, like we've done before. I can't wait. And I'm going to be there live, cage side. Let's go. <laughs> Do you think there might be a chance that this could become like a really big rivalry in the UFC that maybe we'll see a third fight, depending on how the, the outcome of this fight goes? Definitely. I think I think this is going to be huge for, for Aljo and his career as a whole. Um, you know, Peter Yan is the perfect villain. You know, he's yeah. – I never met him, I'm, you know, but, you know, just the things that he's been saying, uh, he, he's the perfect villain. And even when I said that when the fight first happened, like that, the last fight, when it just happened, I was like, I was like, all right, you know, this is perfect. It's going to make for a huge rematch. Everyone's going to hate Jan because he's cheating and he's, and he, you know, for what he did. And, and I was like, oh, it's going to be great. And then it was crazy how it switched and everyone hated Aljo. I was like, what world are we living in? Like <laughs> this guy did the illegal knee. He's like the, he's the, he's the villain he's the, he's the villain and uh and aljo's the man you know he's helps everyone so much he's like you know our, and and he's 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 a good dude you know he's he's a and it's i mean it's just can make him for for a huge rematch i'm so excited for this weekend and once aljo beats him up you know i'm definitely see it uh a, you know a trilogy down the line now i've got a question let's say god forbid aljermaine doesn't win there's another guy at the gym who I think would be a really good matchup. I know you know who I'm talking about because they have some some rivalry outside of the gym. I'm talking about Marab. Do you oh, yeah. think that that could be a fight that Aljamain number one would support? And how do you see a fight like that going? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think Aljamain gets to beat him up and then let Marab beat him up. You know, uh, I think that that's definitely going to be happening. And Marab, Marab runs through him. You know, Rob runs through him like the machine does. He strikes with him. He takes him down. He lets him up. He strikes with him. He takes him down. He beats him up. He he's just Rob is is a beast and one of the best guys on the team. And uh, you know, it's crazy. We got the, the you know two of the best one thirty fivers in the world. Every time I go with these guys, I feel like I need to go down a weight class. It's crazy. <laughs> what happens if Aljamain gets the title? Because Marab is pretty close to the top, and we already know they won't fight each other. You know, what happens there? Do we see, you know, one of them going to another gym? Do you see one of them changing weight classes? Like, what's the, what do you think is going to happen there? No, no way. I think that uh, as long as Aljamain's the king, Marab will be the second man, the gatekeeper, you know, you know beating up everyone who's trying to get to the king you know that that's how we roll the enforcer and exactly marab will be the enforcer just keep yeah. taking everyone out who's trying to get to aljo and if you make it through marab then you get a shot at you know, <laughs> and when aljo's ready to ready to hang it up and move on you know marab will step in there and get the belt you know that 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 would be that would be pretty sweet <laughs> awesome all right matt i appreciate you joining us my uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, best of luck, and uh, I hope that we get to see that uh, fight with Patty here soon. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. August in London, co-main event. You know, I think it's the fight to make. It makes sense, and it's going to be a banger, and I'm going to, you know, derail another hype train. And then uh, if you guys are out in Jacksonville, I'll see you out there, and, uh, we'll, you know, we'll watch Aljo shock the world. Awesome, awesome Thank man. you I so love much. It. A lot. Take care. All right, later. Guys. Bye. The cat made a parent. What's your cat's name? Daisy. She she Daisy. she's a little upset with me tonight. I did go off brand wet food. Oh no. So she's meowing at me for her <laughs> on brand, but unfortunately the store was also sold out. So yeah, Daisy's, cat food uh, is like crazy, crazy hard to find right now. It's insane. Oh, is that just a thing? 
It's a thing. And we yeah, don't need to thing. dive too much into it, but <laughs> well, there was a whole TikTok about it too. I was because I noticed it too. Sorry, I know. this is all cat. Like we'll call this the, <laughs> the, cat, the cat podcast, the cat hour. Um, long enough, we'll talk. Now. Yeah, what a what a what a show though. Uh, K got a lot in there. Travola, draft. We all faith uh, just a little over uh, seventy minutes. I did mental math to figure out how many minutes and how many <laughs> minutes. Uh, another question from Serial Chiller, who's been with us the whole show. Shout out to him. Do you guys think UFC wants Volkan or, or her or Zombie to win? Or her. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Either or. <laughs> or they. Or they. Yes, they. Um, true. If you guys think uh, the UFC I'll... wants Vol, just really quick, it's just like. It, this is kind of a question that gets brought up. I guess the UFC want results in some mm-hmm. fights, but I, mm-hmm. I don't think they have it. In you, Amy, you think that UFC wants certain results in some fights? I think abs- that Dana White does absolutely. Yeah, I Dana agree. White's favorites. I, I don't necessarily think there's one for the, that fight, to be honest. I think, he, like, for example, Chris Cyborg and Amanda Nunez, I think for absolute, for sure, Dana White wanted Amanda Nunez to win. There's just times where you know there's like he's got favorites. I don't think he, he cares who wins this fight. I think he just wants a, a, a great fight. Yeah, because to me, if Zombie is to win, you just set up a rematch and, you know, Volkanovski probably takes the belt back, right? Like to me, like Volkanovski's kind of, he's quickly becoming this like kind of untouchable. I guess Max Holloway can keep up with him, but he's quickly becoming just like undisputed, can't be touched champion. Like, to me, like Amy, you're bringing up, like I feel like Dana White wanted Cyril Gaunt to beat Francis and Ganu. Yes. So you know he does that's like that's that's for sure. Yeah, like I feel like there's certain times where you can kind of predict what, almost like what's the next fight going to be. So like if I were to just project, like I feel like Dana White would probably want Sterling to beat Jan because then Jan gets another. You know, then you keep that going, you build that up. Whereas like Volkanovski. Wins you, you book Holloway again, zombie wins you, Volkanovsky just go gets it back in six months and so on. No, I think if we were asking Volkanovsky and Holloway, I think that they would say Holloway. They would yes, Holloway. I agree. Yeah. And it's not to say that they would dislike any of the fighters. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes it is. But I think it's more just like from a marketing standpoint or like right. you said, who's going to fight next? They do have like, ooh, let's hope this happens. But it's I don't think they're ever like really rooting for anyone. I will say, obviously, the big advantage uh, if Korean Zombie were to win, and I don't know if they're thinking about this, is uh, t- it kind of helps them tap into the the Korean market as well, and maybe uh, help uh, inspire some Korean fighters, uh, mm-hmm. which we've seen from other countries in the past. You need one champion, then all all of a sudden, within a couple of years, that uh, country becomes you know a, a big MMA, a big UFC country. So, uh, yeah. Melissa Delgadillo. Melissa hasn't corrected me pronouncing her last name yet, so I'm assuming I'm pronouncing it right, or at least I hope so. Uh, she says, I think Volkanovski because they think he is more bankable, but I love Zombie. I love Zombie, too. I do not love Korean Zombie. Uh, I think I brought this up uh, last week's episode. One of the only fighters to pull off a uh, Twister, my favorite submission Yep. Uh, in the UFC. Uh, let's kind of end on this, because uh, this is actually not a fight that we talked about in the draft. Is Zombie a live underdog? We talked about Gilbert Burns being uh, a little bit underrated. We talked about Aljamain Sterling potentially being underrated. Is Korean Zombie being underrated? Um, and Serial Chiller says, I think Zombie is a very live underdog. So Alexander Volkanovsky, I mean, this is the biggest favorite of the cards. Minus 775 favorite, which means you would need to bet $775 on Volkanovsky to win a profit of $100. Uh Korean Zombie, aka of course his actual name Chan Sung Jung, plus five fifteen, which means a one hundred dollar bet would give you a five hundred and fifteen dollar profit. Korean Zombie underrated or Volkanovski uh, set at the right price? I think it's a little steep, if that's the right word. It's a little the margin's a little too wide. I don't know. The, use, I don't know the betting good, lingo. Good, ver- good verb there. That or okay. adjective there. That was a good way why? to describe it. Yeah. Why? Okay. Why? Why is, why is good? Uh, yeah, why is a little wide towards zombie? Yeah, yeah. I think he, I th- I definitely think he's a, should be an underdog, but not that quite that drastic. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who just beat Danny. Yeah, he did lose to Brian Ortega before that, but then TKO victories against both Frankie Edgar and Renato Moicano. And don't forget, he was beating Yair Rodriguez in a five-round fight literally until the last 
second. He lost with one second left. Yep. He got knocked out by Yari Rodriguez in what was a crazy fight. Uh, but he was easily going to win on the scorecards there. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, so, I mean, he lasts one more second in that fight. He's 4-1 and one in his last uh, – he's actually be 6-1 and one in his last seven. Yeah. 5-1 and I, one in his last six. Sorry, mental math. Read thoughts. I, I think Volkanovski wins this one pretty easily. But, like, again, I'm not rushing a lay. What is it? Minus 7 – 760 Minus 775 yeah like that that's crazy right like now? you should never like no, sure, can't. yes Korean Zabi can win I mean the guy has crazy finishing upside and also two straight five round fights maybe he has that cardio now to really kind of gear up and handle Volkanovsky's gas gas tank but you know I like Gilbert Burns I might bet on I don't think I'm gonna bet on Korean Zabi though no. And one last comment from Cyril Chiller. He was a military soldier. His mentality is tough, of course. I mean, he was he lost that you that title fight against uh, Jose Aldo way back in 2013, and then didn't fight again in, until 2017 because he had to do the mandatory military that Korean uh, athletes have to do. Um, so that's it. Uh, usually we talk parlay, but we've kind of gone over now. We're already at an hour and 15 minutes. Unless you two have a parlay that you're just dying to give out, I think we're good to wrap it up. Yeah, no, and if there's anything um, over on bet sided, I will have something up Friday. I'll have best bets card up on Friday, so make sure you check that out. But of course, thank you everyone for tuning in. Two guests, first time ever, so that was awesome. This is a historic episode. <laughs> historic jab cross hook, and the first time we've had a fighter who's fighting this weekend. So best of luck yeah. uh, to Kay Hansen this weekend. If you're watching, of course, subscribe to us on YouTube, like, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. I think I think we're good. Cyril Chiller and Melissa both chimed in that they love the show. Thanks, great show. Uh, glad that you two enjoyed it. We'll be doing this weekly uh, forever for the next 80 years. And, so and next that. week we're going to talk about Bellator too. Yes, so all you Bellator. Sprinkling Bellator. a little, yes. Sprinkling a little, a little yeah, Bellator. Yes. Uh, but it actually is a very good Bellator card, so I'm excited for mm -hmm. that. So thank you all for watching. Until next week, uh, take care. Best of luck with your bets this weekend if you do decide to bet. And uh, enjoy the card because it's going to be a fun one. See you later.